biggest source of income for the federal government is the income tax. Everything else is small by comparison. There's two kinds of income tax, one on corporations and one on individuals. The income of a corporation is what we would normally call its profits, its net revenues, what, what's left over when you subtract the costs of doing business from the revenues you get from selling whatever the business is in business to produce. The United States government taxes that. It's considered a corporate income, and they have to pay an income tax, just like you and I have to pay an income tax on our wages and our salaries and our whatever other income that we have. Let's take a look at that. Fifty years ago, the United States government got, ready, 50% more of its revenue from corporations' income tax than from individuals. In other words, corporations as a whole in America had to come up with 50% more than was taken from individuals. Corporations were the major support of the government's budget. What is the situation today? Corporations pay one quarter of the amount that individuals pay. Do you understand the shift? That's not small, that's not little, that's not marginal. That's massive. Individual, the, the burden of the federal government has been taken off business steadily for 50 years and put on you. And on behalf of corporate America, thank you. Okay. Now let's take a look at the second thing. The big thing now is in, individual income tax because the corporations have gotten out of it. When you heard Matt earlier say uh, GE paid 2%, Goldman Sachs, or they get, they get refunds, that's what you're, you're tacking into. You're hearing, yeah, hear the particular examples of this enormous mega trend. Now let's look at the individual income tax. Same story. I tell you this only because my experience as a teacher of economics is that nobody knows this. In the 1960s and 70s, and there may even be some people here who paid income tax back then, so you'll remember. In the 1960s and 70s, well, I'll take one year as an example. 1970, I'll just pick it. In 1970, the top income tax bracket in the United States was 70%. Here's what that meant. If you were a single individual in 1970 in America, Every dollar you earned over $100,000 a year, little rich people, obviously, every dollar over 100000 you ready? You had to give Uncle Sam 70 cents. You got to keep 30. If you think that's high, in the previous 15 years before 1970, the rate was most of those years 91%. Ready? Every dollar over 100000 that you earned as a rich income earner, you had to give the government 91 cents, and you kept nine. Why? Because we had just been through a catastrophic depression and then World War II. And in those situations, the argument in America was we all have to pull together, and those who have the most have to contribute the most. And I want to remind you, this 91% before 1970 and 70% in the, in the 1970s was endorsed by Republican presidents and Democratic presidents, Republican Congresses and Democrats. Nobody said boo politically. It was a universally supported rule in the United States. I'm not talking about Russia or China or Cuba or any place. We took it from the rich people. That's what we did. What is the rate, the top rate on the income tax in the United States today? 35%. Okay? That's an income tax drop, you ready? For the richest. From 91% in the 60s to 35% now. That is a tax cut. You have never seen anything like that. Nothing like that happened for the vast mass of the American people, not even close. So what do we have over 50 years? We have a massive shift of the burden of taxation at the federal level from corporations to individuals and from the richest to all of you.